The world's biggest passenger plane, the one Airbus buried and declared dead, might actually fly again. Emirates, the only airline that still swears by the A380, is pushing for a brand new version. They have already put $20 billion on the table and told Airbus to build A380neo with using its suggestions. This is the story of how a jet that everyone else gave up on could rise from the grave, if Emirates gets its way. Why the original A380 failed? When Airbus first rolled out the A380 in the early 2000s, the aviation world thought it was witnessing the future of long-haul travel. This airplane was a flying cathedral. Two full decks stretched the length of the fuselage, and if you packed it to the absolute limit, you could fit more than 850 people inside. The press gushed over it, airports scrambled to build facilities for it, and airlines lined up with orders. It's because it promised some incredible things. Fewer flights, more passengers, and unbeatable comfort in the sky. For a short moment, the hype looked justified. But the truth is, the A380 carried problems so big that even its sheer size could not hide them. The first problem was its weight. The A380 was a beast, tipping the scales at over 1.2 million pounds maximum takeoff weight. That kind of number is impressive to hear, but in practice, it meant burning through insane amounts of fuel just to get airborne. And fuel was not exactly cheap when this aircraft entered service. Every pound mattered, and the A380 carried more pounds than anyone could reasonably afford. Then came the engines. There were four of them, huge, powerful, and very thirsty. The Rolls-Royce Trent 900 and the GP7200 were engineering marvels in their day, but they were built on 1990s technology. By the time the A380 was flying, the industry was already shifting hard toward twin-engine efficiency. Jets like the Boeing 777 proved you didn't need four engines anymore to cross oceans safely. Two were enough, and they burned far less fuel. Airlines took one look at their operating costs and realized smaller twins were the better deal. Airport compatibility was another disaster Airbus never solved properly. The A380 had an 80-meter wingspan, which made it too wide for many runways and too bulky for a lot of terminals. Only certain airports could even accept it, and those airports had to spend billions modifying gates, taxiways, and boarding systems to handle the double-decker giant. For an airline, that meant you could not just send it anywhere you wanted, you were locked into a limited network of airports willing to invest in A380 infrastructure. It was not exactly flexible. And arrival time of the A380 was also a problem. It clashed with one of the biggest strategic shifts in aviation. In the early 2000s, Airbus believed the future was all about mega hubs. Their idea was that airlines would funnel passengers into big airports like London Heathrow or Dubai, then send them off on these giant planes to other hubs. It seemed like a good idea at first, but Boeing had a different vision. They predicted travelers would prefer point-to-point -point flying on smaller, long-range jets. Instead of connecting through hubs, passengers could go straight from, say, Seattle to Singapore on a 787 Dreamliner. Now guess who won that bet? Yes, Boeing. The hub-to-hub -hub model became outdated just as the A380 was ramping up. Airlines were also hit with financial reality soon. The list price of an A380 hovered around $445 million per plane. That's nearly half a billion dollars before you even put fuel in the tank or staff the cabin. To make the numbers work, airlines had to keep them packed almost every flight. And not just packed, filled with paying customers willing to shell out for premium seats. That's a tough ask, especially when global recessions, oil price spikes, and later the COVID-19 pandemic hammered demand. For carriers like Air France, Singapore Airlines, and Lufthansa, the economics simply broke down. It didn't help that the production process itself was messy. Airbus struggled with delays, wiring issues, and cost overruns during development. By the time the A380 program stabilized, it had already chewed through more than $25 billion in development costs, making it one of the most expensive bets in aviation history. And what was the return? Fewer than 250 aircraft delivered before Airbus finally pulled the plug in 2021. Boeing has delivered more than 1,800 777s and over 1,600 787s. A380 was not even close. Now the irony is that passengers actually loved the A380. Ask anyone who flew it, and you will hear about how quiet it was, how smooth the ride felt, and how much space the cabin offered compared to anything else in the sky. But airlines don't make fleet decisions based on passenger feelings alone. They look at the bottom line, and the bottom line said the A380 was too big, too expensive, 
and too restricted to operate profitably across a DI. How A380neo is going to be different? Emirates has pitched in A380neo. The airline is not asking Airbus to polish the old model. They want a completely re-engineered giant. They want A380 stripped of its dead weight and rebuilt with two decades of aviation progress baked in. The first big change is the structure itself. When Airbus launched the original A380, composites were still something you would find in small doses. The wings had some, the tail had some, but most of the aircraft was still heavy metal. Now, 20 years later, composites dominate modern wide bodies. The Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 rely on them for about half their frames. They are lighter, stronger, and more durable. If an A380neo was built with today's technology, the weight savings alone would be enormous. Less weight means less drag, less fuel burn, and more efficiency. But Sir Tim Clark is not stopping at lighter materials. The president of Emirates has been very clear with his demands that the aircraft needs new wings and a redesigned tail. That enormous vertical stabilizer, which is the tall fin at the back, was built oversized the first time around. It created stability, yes, but also unnecessary drag. Clark says it doesn't need to be that big anymore, and trimming it down would save fuel on every single flight. He has also suggested a redesigned wing with sharper aerodynamics. If this happens, the A380neo wouldn't just look different, it would fly differently. Airbus is also considering folding wing tips. If you have seen the Boeing 777X, you know the trick. Giant wings that can fold up at the tip so the plane can still fit into normal gates. The original A380 had a wingspan problem. It was too wide for many airports. Folding tips would solve that. Imagine the A380neo rolling into airports that once couldn't handle it. That's a game changer for compatibility, and it opens the door to routes the original version never had a chance to serve. Of course, structure and design are only part of the story. The true make or break feature is the engines. The first A380 had four of them, and while they were powerful, they were also guzzlers built with 1990s tech. That's ancient in aviation terms. Today, Rolls-Royce is pushing a different kind of beast, the ultrafan. This is a revolution in how engines work. It's because the ultrafan uses a geared turbofan system, which basically allows the big front fan and the inner core of the engine to spin at their most efficient speeds instead of being locked together. That makes every part of the process smoother and saves fuel. The fan itself is massive. It's 140 inches in diameter, which is one of the biggest ever created, and it's made of lightweight composite blades. Inside, there is advanced ceramics that can take higher heat without melting down, which boosts efficiency even further. And the best part is that it is designed to run on 100% sustainable aviation fuel, something airlines are under intense pressure to adopt. When Rolls-Royce tested the Ultrafan demonstrator in 2023, it exceeded targets with over 87,000 pounds of thrust. That kind of performance, paired with up to 25% lower fuel burn, would make the A380 Neo an entirely different animal. This way, it could actually compete with twin-engine wide bodies like the A350 or Boeing 787 on efficiency. And that's the only way a four-engine giant stands a chance in the coming years. Emirates Clever Plan so we have seen how the A380neo could be built lighter, smarter, and more efficient. But even if Airbus figured out the technology, there is still the question of who would actually make this monster work. And this is where Emirates plays its hand brilliantly. They are designing the stage where it could succeed, and they have been building that stage for years. Let's start with the basics, passenger experience. Unlike every other airline who used the extra cabin space to cram in more seats, Emirates turned it into a brand. Showers at 40,000 feet, a bar in the sky, suites with sliding doors that feel like hotel rooms, wider rows in economy that make long hauls bearable. And let's not forget how quiet the cabin is compared to other wide bodies. Emirates figured out that people will pay more and keep coming back if you give them a unique experience. That's why the A380 is their signature. Now combine that passenger love with Emirates network strategy. Dubai is the textbook definition of a mega hub. It is positioned right between Europe, Asia, and Africa. This makes it the perfect stopover for connecting flights. Smaller airlines might struggle to fill an A380 every day, but Emirates have an endless stream of transfer passengers moving through their hub. It's like owning the world's busiest crossroads and deciding to put the biggest bus you can find on it. So the economics of the A380 made more sense in their case as they were the one carrier that could actually keep it full. 
and Emirates has already done it. Even after Airbus declared the program dead, Emirates kept flying more than 100 A380s every single day, serving over 40 destinations across six continents. Other airlines were cutting routes, parking their giants in the desert, but it's the infrastructure where you start to really appreciate their strategy. The A380 was a nightmare for many airlines because of the costs of adapting airports, training staff, and stocking parts. Emirates flipped that weakness into a moat. They have invested billions into A380-specific facilities in Dubai. There are maintenance hangars that can hold multiple super jumbos at once, spare part inventories large enough to keep the fleet running for decades, pilot training centers and simulators that are dedicated to the type. Even their gates and boarding bridges are built to handle the double-deck layout. In other words, while other carriers would have to start from scratch to support an A380neo, Emirates already has the ecosystem ready. This gives them a massive head start. It also locks in their advantage against competitors. Imagine being another airline thinking about buying into the A380neo. You would need to spend huge amounts on training, new gates, spare parts, and specialized crews just to get started. Emirates doesn't need to do any of that. They have already sunk the cost. For them, a re-engineered A380 would just slide into the system like it was meant to be there. And let's talk about the economics for a moment, because this is where Emirates shines. The original A380 was brutal on operating costs, but Emirates squeezed more out of it than anyone else. With their two-class layout holding up to 615 passengers, their cost per seat was competitive with smaller planes. As long as the seats were full, that's the key. Emirates could fill them thanks to their hub strategy. Now picture that same equation, but with 20 to 25% less fuel burn, cheaper maintenance thanks to composites, and more flexible routes with folding wingtips. Now, the maths look profitable in ways the old A380 never managed. Of course, Sir Tim Clark knows that technology and economics are not enough to sway Airbus alone. He is playing the long game. Emirates has positioned itself as the only airline with both the appetite and the ability to keep the A380 alive. By being the largest operator, they have become the one customer Airbus cannot ignore. Challenges to revival. Now the million dollar question, or in this case, the $20 billion question is that even if Airbus could redesign and rebuild the A380, would it actually succeed in today's market? Because history is filled with great engineering projects that looked incredible on paper, but in the real world, they just didn't sell. The A380 already lived that story once, so why would the sequel turn out any different? Let's start with the obvious elephant in the room, demand for giant aircraft. For the past two decades, the industry has leaned towards smaller, twin-engine planes. The Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 have been stacking orders in the hundreds because they offer flexibility. Airlines can use them on long, thin routes, flights with fewer passengers that still need to cover 10 or 12 hours of airtime. You cannot send a 600-seat A380 on those routes without losing money. And this trend hasn't slowed down. If anything, it's grown stronger. But the twist here is that the world's busiest airports are running out of space. Heathrow, JFK, Narita, Dubai, Hong Kong. These hubs are slot controlled. That means airlines cannot just add more takeoffs and landings whenever they want. The gates are full, the runways are jammed, and the only way to move more passengers is to put them on bigger planes. This is where the A380neo could find its opening. Instead of five 787s clogging up the schedule, you send two A380neos, and move the same number of people with fewer slots. Then there is the money angle. Some routes are so packed and so profitable that they practically beg for more seats. London to Dubai, Sydney to Los Angeles, New York to Singapore. These are not routes struggling to fill a cabin. Airlines have long waiting lists of people willing to pay premium prices, especially for business and first class. The A380 already works on those routes, and a version that's 20 to 25% cheaper to run could double down on the profits. Now let's talk about the environment. At first glance, a four-engine giant looks like the worst possible answer to the industry's climate problem. Regulators want carbon-neutral growth by 2050. Airlines are under pressure to show progress every year. Smaller twins look cleaner, greener, and smarter. But dig a little deeper, and the equation gets interesting. On a per-seat basis, a fully loaded A380neo could rival or even beat smaller jets on emissions. Why? because one 600-seat plane is always going to be more efficient than three 200-seat planes flying the same route. Fewer flights, fewer takeoffs, fewer landings, less congestion, and lower fuel burn overall. And when you also consider Ultrafan engine's 25% fuel savings 
and its ability to run on 100% sustainable aviation fuel, you will start to see how it might actually work. The A380neo might not be the villain people assume. It could be a surprising ally in cutting emissions on the busiest global routes. Still, let's not sugarcoat it. Restarting production would be a nightmare. Airbus didn't just pause the A380 line in 2021, they shut it down completely. Factories were dismantled, supply chains were dissolved, engineering teams were reassigned to the A350, A321 XLR, and other programs that are already bringing in steady revenue. Reopening the line would mean new tooling, fresh certification under today's stricter FAA and EASA rules, rebuilt supplier networks, and modernized systems across the board. Airbus estimates the price tag at $15 to $20 billion, and that's before a single plane is delivered. The problem is, Emirates alone is not enough. Even if they ordered another 100 NEOs, Airbus would still struggle to justify the costs. They would need at least three or four more launch customers willing to commit to dozens of planes each. And so far, the interest is underwhelming. Lufthansa, Qantas, Air France, Singapore Airlines, who all were once proud a 380 operator, have either retired theirs or stopped expanding. Convincing them to buy back in would take more than a new engine and some folding wingtips. But does that mean it's impossible? Not quite. Because aviation history is full of crazy bets that somehow worked. The Boeing 747 was called a white elephant before it even left the factory. And yet, it went on to change the face of air travel and became one of the most iconic jets in history. Even the original Airbus A380 was a gamble. Airbus knew it might fail, but they built it anyway. Sometimes one airline's conviction can tip the scales, and that's what makes Emirates' position so powerful. They have already invested billions in A380 infrastructure. They own the largest fleet of them in the world. Their hub-and-spoke model at Dubai practically screams for a plane like this, and their president, Sir Tim Clark, is not shy about putting the pressure on Airbus. When told the project would cost $20 billion, he didn't flinch. So will the A380neo be successful? The answer depends on whether Airbus believes Emirates can pull a few allies into the plan. If Asian and Middle Eastern carriers with similar hub models, maybe Qatar Airways, maybe a Chinese giant like China Southern, maybe even an Indian carrier looking to dominate international routes, decide they want in, then Airbus has a fighting chance. Now tell us, what do you think? Will the A380neo actually make a proper comeback? Or is it too good to be true? Tell us your opinions in the comment section below. And before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss the latest aviation updates. We will keep you in the loop. Goodbye for now.